Hey guys, my name is Olivia. Welcome to my channel. If you already are a subscriber, welcome back. Just wanted to kind of dive right in, basically talking about what the title states. What is the difference between inpatient and outpatient nursing? I know we have a lot of people out there in the world who are new nurses or they've been a nurse, but maybe they've only swung one direction or the other their whole career. And just kind of want to have insight on what to expect on the other side. So a little quick background about me so you can understand where my um, information comes from because um, definitely this video is going to be obviously very subjective to my experiences so every pros and cons that I list here is really going to be in regards to my experience right so my quick background I've been a nurse for a little bit over five years I started an outpatient as a labor and delivery nurse in Atlanta and I did that for about two years so that's how I started my healthcare, my nursing career and then I transitioned to outpatient care, particularly hospice as a hospice case manager, then transitioned into hospice management. And now I'm currently in a clinic setting as a nurse educator slash clinic nurse. So definitely placed my feet in different roles from um, bedside nursing to case management to actual management and then into education slash clinic type nursing. So let's just jump right in. What is the pros of inpatient nursing? Definitely, I will start off with that inpatient nursing typically has a higher rate of pay. Um, and the pay rate, the pay schedule is definitely a bit different. Typically in inpatient care, when I say inpatient, just to, in, just to make things clear, inpatient, I'm thinking of hospital jobs that are more bedside nursing, okay? Just wanna make that clear. You can work in a hospital and still have outpatient kind of responsibilities, but I'm talking more so bedside nurses. So your med surge nurses, your ICU, your labor, you know, your NICU, et cetera. So typically with inpatient nursing, you typically have a higher rate of pay only because you're getting paid hourly. And a lot of times they just compensate you better because of the job demands. So with that, that could be a, obviously a big pro if income is really important to you. A lot of times with outpatient, you're getting paid in salary rate. So, you know, what you do doesn't really, how much you work doesn't really determine how much you get paid. It's pretty much the same check. Uh, when you work an outpatient, you can work really hard two weeks or you can work really easy two weeks and your check's gonna be the same, right? While in inpatient, obviously, if you work extra hours, you're going to get extra money. So something to consider. Some outpatient jobs do give you more if you work over the eight hour shifts or whatever shifts hours that you have. Things can vary, of course, depending on the job you get, but typically you're gonna get paid hourly as opposed to salary. And of course, because of inpatient and bedside nursing, the status quo is that you're gonna be working 312s if you're a full-time staff member at a hospital. So some people might consider that a pro and some people might, might consider that a con. So when you're only working three days, you typically, of course, not typically, you do have more days off, but that could be something that is important to you or not important to you. And working those 12 hour shifts could be like, okay, let me just knock it out, work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then I'm off for the rest of the week. And then maybe start the next week shift that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now you just have six days in between off, right? No PTO needed. So things like that is what really drives people to work those three twelves. But from my experience, I found that I wasn't in control of my schedule. And so a lot of times, I would work like let's say Monday, Tuesday, Friday, and then I would still have to come back on Tuesday. And then I worked night shift when I was at bedside. So that also swayed my experience too, because then one of those off days I'm sleeping in. So it was just a lot. So you also want to consider what time of day you're working. Are you working to 7A to 7P or 7P to 7A? So many variants. Um, can you do those type of hours? And 12 hours is hard regardless of what time of day you do it. Those are just things to consider. That's why a lot of these pros can be cons really quick. It's just about who are you, right? So outside of the logistics, definitely some of the pros of inpatient is that you get to see a variety of patients on variety of needs, right? Yes, particularly me, I only work labor, so I only saw people ready to push 
or people who had issues in during their pregnancies but and that's particularly labor but if you're working med surge or icu or all these other floors you're definitely going to see a variety of patients a variety of needs variety of other layered issues so my dog wants to learn as well as you can see him here <laughs> with inpatient needs. Um, yeah, so you're gonna see a lot of variety. Even if you're working in more niched units, you still have to consider other parts of them and really handle those um, emergent issues. So that really gets you more knowledge and learning more about the human body and see how everything is integrated and really help play a huge part in just handling acute situations. So if you really like more acute care, best side is going to be the best thing for you kind of putting band-aids on it essentially is really going to be uh, a good thing when it comes to hospital settings of course not just band-aids but yeah kind of because at the end of the day they're going to have to go to their primary care which is outpatient to really handle the day-to-day -day medication management and like you know they can go to get checked every two weeks etc hospitals are more for emergent situations typically right there's many layers to a hospital but just a broad spectrum of looking at a hospital so with that being said that's why i really think it's really good from, as a pro because the next reason why it's a pro is that it is great for new nurses so you get to see everything you get to put two and two together you get to paint a full picture and put everything you learned from school into an experience with a patient or two and you might have several patients throughout the day and so you might be able to see different things and I think that's really important um, when developing your nursing skills whether it's your hard skills like IV administration or you know putting in catheters etc and head-to-toe assessments and also soft skills like building report um, how to you know, work with team members, um, et cetera. I think it really helps with building those strong nursing skills. And overall, it helps build that confidence as a nurse. Because once you go into outpatient, a lot of times, you know, you walk in with experience into that outpatient role and it allows you to just have more confidence doing um, some other pros that I'm gonna mention later in the video. Quickly, if you haven't already, definitely like, comment, subscribe. Definitely going to be posting a lot more videos related to nursing. And also, if you're in Chicago area, I'll be talking a lot about Chicago content and just all things life from vlogging, etc. So don't forget to subscribe down below. It's free, y'all. It's free. It's free. And so another pro I would say with inpatient is that you can go home and leave your patients behind you, right? So you're taking care of Johnny and Susie night or you know whatever shift you work and when you go home Johnny Susie's gone you're now you're working with Bob and Carol <laughs> these are some names anyways you definitely get to just leave whatever kind of day you had whether it was a really bad night though because of your patients you get to leave those patients in that shift and not have to think about them of course that might waver depending on what kind of unit you work in but most of the time that's how it goes and some quick cons about inpatient. There is not many cons, but the cons are strong, right? <laughs> so one con for sure is you're on your feet a lot. You are on your feet. Not only are you working long hours, you're, those hours are long because you are definitely, definitely on the go. Patients need ice, patients need new meds. It's time for this, it's time for that. In my experience with labor, it's time to push. Mom might push for four hours. Uh-oh, baby went down, we gotta go to a C-section. Or, you know, if you work in other units, things crash, crash cart, CPR. I mean, there's so many layers. Oh, you know, the pharmacy didn't get the lab. Now you're trying to figure out what happened in the machine when it was getting transported through? You're calling people, you're calling this, you're, you're getting a report. It's a lot of moving pieces. So definitely that can be very stressful, but I think a new nurse needs to experience that because they need to figure out prioritization. That's why I say it's great for new nurses. But when it comes to like people who are already in the game, they got what they need, the confidence, et cetera, and just the skill, I can see that being very draining. That's why I left after two years. Once again, the long hours obviously is a con. To most people, I would think, I think like, yes, they love their three days 
of work only, but those 12 hours are really hard when you're in it, right? So just consider that on a long-term scale. Then of course, it's high stress, you know, as stated with all the things, you move all these moving pieces. And when a hospital is literally a building of nurses, hospitals are ran by nurses. That's why when you go to the career pages of a lot of hospitals, it will be like careers and then nursing. <laughs> like we have our own section of the career website just because we are the hospital. Like yes, providers are in there and texts and respiratory therapists and all these other layers. Yes, that's great. But the heartbeat of the hospital is nurses. So understand that you will be the heartbeat of a lot of patient concerns, even though there's other people in the building that can handle it, right? You're the first point of contact <laughs> and you still have to at least get it to a level that is um, stable before you can go reach out to your resources. So that's the issue I find with hospitals. All right, so let's jump straight into outpatient. Definitely I'll say the first pros with outpatient is the counterpart of inpatient, which is eight hour days, typically eight or 10 hours, depending on, you know, your job. Um, either five days, eight hours each day, or usually four days, 10 hours each day. So those hours typically are a little bit more manageable. People can tend to wrap their life around it. They can still have their day after and before work. Um, and so a lot of people might really like that, especially if you're a person with a family or you're a person that just wants to be in bed at night every day and not have to feel rushed like even if you work 7 to 7 p, you feel like you gotta go immediately to bed because you have to wake up early the next day, right? Well, usually if you're working 8, 5, you're getting off at 5 o'clock, you're getting off at 6, and you can still walk your dog, cook dinner, watch a TV show, relax, take a bath, you know, do all the good things before you start the next day. Well, I hope you take a bath even if you work 12 hours, but you know what I mean. <laughs> On the logistics, um, as stated from before, you're gonna be working salary, so, um, some people might like that consistent income, knowing that every time I go to work, every time I get paid, I'm getting blank number, right? Some people might really like that. So it just depends on the kind of person you are when it comes to structure in your the pay you bring home. Also, some other logistics about outpatient is that typically you don't work weekends and you don't work holidays because they're working off of business hours, especially if you're working in a clinic setting. Particularly for me, because I have experience in home health, and clinic work, that really leaned more so for that pro tend to lean more so in my clinic role that I'm in now. When I was in hospice, obviously people die um, at any time of day, so there's always gonna be somebody on, but definitely when you're done, you're done and switched over to the next shift, um, but still, and of course people still have to work holidays, so that's where it might get a little more gray. It's not really a pro if you're working in home health kind of roles, depending on what you're, um, your schedule is but typically holidays and weekends are typically off they usually have a weekend staff that's more of a thing as opposed to inpatient where everybody kind of um, puts their hand in the bucket for weekends so one thing about outpatient that i've noticed is you can tend to be in a specific population that could be in hospitals too right if you work in a NICU your population is babies right period, point blank. There's no adult going into your unit. So that's where it's the, that, that's where it can be the same. But overall, if we're just thinking of mess surge and more adult health in the hospital setting outside of those really special niche like labor and all that. Clinic work in the outpatient setting, definitely typically more niched, except if you're working in like primary care clinics, right? Because you're going to get all types of populations. But a lot of times if you're working in endoscopy or if you're working in plastic surgery, if you're working in aesthetics, you're only going to see that particular population for those particular needs. And so a lot of times, fertility clinic, I'm sorry, just these types of clinics are popping in my head, but in orthopedic clinics, um, like outpatient kind of surgeries, you're only going to see the same things every day. And so that's definitely a pro to some people because then they can really niche down into their specialty and really harbor down to some good skills. Um, but I will, but I will just jump straight into a con really quick. A con of that could be that you're seeing the same things over and over again, right? So with that being said, that can really 
get boring to you eventually if you keep doing the same things over and over again. But of course, if you have a passion for that specialty, then it won't be boring, boring because you get to hone into your skills and get to just be an expert in the field of that kind of world. Another beautiful pro thing about outpatient is that you're not really doing acute symptoms. Typically, you're usually doing more chronic, more ongoing things and just management. And so that allows you to just kind of be at a steadier pace as opposed to like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's on fire, right? It's not on fire, they're coming in for the checkup. So we're just monitoring their labs, we're monitoring their symptoms. So it's not about emergent situations. So you don't feel like your head's been chopped off in that way. And with that being said, I find that it's really helpful to work in outpatient settings when it comes to your teammates. So what I mean by that is a lot of times in out in inpatient, you know you have all these resources. You know you have your chaplains, hospital chaplains, hospital social workers, um, hospital, I don't know, techs or whatever. But I find that in outpatient, you really get to use this, these resources. You really get to find more niched resources, such as like a behavioral health counselor, where if something, because because nothing is truly emergent, you get to reach out to those really unique, um, specialized team members and say, hey, my patient's dealing with these issues. Can you jump into their care and try to you know, help them with that very niche situation in terms of their care coordination? So it's a lot of care coordination, essentially. And so you get to not be the one with all the answers, especially as a nurse in hospital settings, you feel like you have to have all the answers. And I, found, I find that an outpatient, you get to say, I'm not sure, but let me find someone who is sure. And they can, you can find that team member who's sure nothing is in a rush, they jump in, they do it because that's what they're sure of, right? I really love that because then we get to, you get to see how a full picture is painted in terms of providing a full holistic care for a patient. I really got a chance to work with team members I never thought I would ever work with in healthcare, such as chaplains, and like I said, behavioral health counselors, social workers, like being able to pass them to a social worker and they provide them resources for housing and food. And you know, you can pass them on to benefit specialists and they help them with their insurance and what do they qualify for. So you get to really provide their day in and day out care. And so it's almost like that clear defined line of like responsibilities and everybody plays a part. And I just really love that about outpatient. I would say that's one of my biggest pros because I'm not everything to everybody. If you know, you know. Another pro is that breaks are typically honored more than outpatient. We all know a hospital 30 minutes is way different than an outpatient 30 minutes because um, sometimes it's like it's not enough. Hospitals, I feel like there's no breaks. Either you don't have breaks all day or you had that 30 minutes, but it feels like 10, right? I feel like in, I don't feel like in my experience, outpatient, my breaks have been honored more. It's been utilized 99% of the time and because nothing is emergent, typically. So I really appreciate that I have days that I get to go to work knowing that I'm gonna have a time to recensor, regroup, eat my food, etc. So some cons that I would mention, depending on what you do with outpatient, um, sometimes you do bring work home. And I would say that has been different in my experience between home health and clinic work that I do now. Home health, hospice, you know, I put those in the same bucket. You know, you definitely bring work home because those patient families rely on you for their cares. Um, and so, with that being said, if something happens at 8 p.m., their inclination is to reach out to you because you've been the one that's always been there for them. And so the issue with that is it's hard. You have to set boundaries with families, especially in home health environments, saying like, hey, I'm off the clock right now. Please reach out to these numbers when I'm not on the clock, right? And so, and then when you come back to work, you're working with that same group of people that's on your census. So I find that that can be very um, challenging if you're not a boundary setter kind of person. Another con I would say, depending on what you do, is that you have on-call requirements. So as stated, if it's 8 p.m., your job might, during the job interview, that you must work on call hours, maybe two, three times a month, where you have to do the overnight shift, have the phone on you, if anything is anything comes up, you have to answer it. So once again, work is coming home with you, right? Because you're doing triage on the phone after hours, things like that. So definitely consider that, depending on where you work, 
that might not be a reality. They might strictly only have night shift people and strictly only have weekend people. But just something to know, something to ask about in interviews is if there's an on-call requirement, what does that look like per month? And what expectations do you have when people call in? Another con, as stated from before, really depends on who you are. You're working five days a week, so you're doing the nine to five kind of world. So some people might find that challenging because of course you gotta consider your life. Like you're working five out of seven days of the week so you, have, you only really have two days off. And so is that enough for you? That's a question for you to answer. Is the commute, do you work an hour away? So now every day you're driving two hours a day as opposed to just, hey, I drive an hour only three times of the week back and forth and I can do three times a week. But five days a week, that's a no. A lot of these cons can be pros, a lot of these pros can be cons. And as stated before, you're doing some of the similar work day in and day out, so that can be kind of repetitive. If, if that kind of work really bores you and you want to feel like you're seeing very different things every day, but that might not be the reality in your outpatient job. It could really be different things different every day. It just depends on what do you specialize in in terms of outpatient. And lastly, I would say a con with outpatient, which could actually be a pro. So, you learn how you toss it and where you work. But you are working with the same staff typically every day, all the time. Because it's not a hospital setting where Johnny, Susie, and Bob work on Monday and then tomorrow you can work with, you know, Carol, Lizzie, and, you know, Greg the next day. While in nine to five jobs, Bobby, Susie, and Johnny, you're working with them Monday through Friday because we don't all work in five days a week. And so it could be the same people day in and day out. Um, so that's definitely something to know. Are those five, are those people that you work with, people you want to see every five out of seven days of the week, are they really collaborative, et cetera? Because I find that if you don't have the right team, you ain't gonna be there long. While in hospital settings, you don't gotta see the same person every day. So you might be like, I could tolerate her or him for this shift and I probably won't see him in the next two four, five next shifts. Um, because everybody's Mondays are, not every Monday you're gonna see the same people, not every Tuesday you're gonna see the same people in the hospital. While in outpatient, nine out of 10 of the time we see the same people. That could be a beautiful thing because then you get to grow closer bonds with people. So those are some things to consider in terms of inpatient versus outpatient. Let me know down below if you have any other things to add to this conversation or if anything that i mentioned was really insightful to you and kind of helped you get some clarity on what you want to do next and at the end of the day i'm excited for you you're a nurse you're killing it you're doing it you know what i'm saying people out there need you and so i'm proud of you to just keep showing up for yourself in the midst of it all and i hope that these tips and just insights from my perspective as working in these various fields has allowed you to kind of create a decision for yourself, especially if you're job hunting right now. All right, guys, I wish you all the best. And don't forget to leave any questions, comments down below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.